Mark, if you would like to jump back online, we just have a couple of questions for you, please. Yep, I'm here. Okay, so one of the questions is, do we know what the resistance status or resistance gene profiles of the strain or strains are that are in Australia? Well, the answer to that one uh, is not just yet, as, as far as I can uh, ascertain. There's some doubt as to which of the particular biotypes has entered Australia. Uh, two or three different groups have been looking at the genetics uh, of uh, samples from Queensland, and it's not entirely clear yet. The, the general consensus is we may well have a hybrid between the two, two biotypes. Now, as regards resistance, there's a number of groups keen uh, on looking at that issue. I know, in fact, there's another um, teleconference going on this afternoon involving people from CSIRO and also from uh, New South Wales DPI. Uh, Grant Heron's group at uh, Elizabeth MacArthur Ag Institute interested in looking for the expression of resistance genes, so a genetic assessment uh, for the, the presence of resistance genes uh, in, in the material that they have on hand. I know that CSIRO are very interested in looking at, um, at uh, BT as a potential uh, control agent for it as well. So that's Bacillus thuringiensis, which is the donor of the genes that goes into uh, BT cotton. Uh, so there is uh, there are a number of groups getting into the uh, the issue at the minute, and it is going to be followed up quite strongly, I'm sure. Okay, thank you. Um, so next question is, what is the likely impact on pastures or other crops, please? Well, the uh, the information that we've got, I mean, pastures are a very variable thing depending on what country you're in. We we have different combinations of, of grasses to lots of other countries where these things are established. Um, but from what we can tell, it's it's quite possible that there will be be moderate damage to pastures. I don't think the damage to pastures is likely to be as severe as it is to uh, the key crops such as maize and sorghum, um, but it will really depend on the composition of the pastures and uh, the, the location of the crops as well, because that will determine uh, whether uh, the insect can maintain ongoing populations or whether it's just a seasonal uh, immigrant on, um, on air currents and so on. So yeah. okay. that's a complicated way of saying it's a bit of an unknown at the minute, but I suspect not as bad as the situation will be with uh, with, with crops like, such as maize and sorghum. Okay, thank you. Another question has come in regarding pecans. Um, what part of the pecan would do they attack, please? I would imagine, and, and you know, I'm, I'm down in the Riverina, I'm not really familiar with pecans, to be 100% honest. Uh, there's not, not many around down here as far as I know, but I believe that they would be primarily uh, foliage feeders. Uh, I do not think they have, there's much likelihood that they would be strongly attacking the developing nuts. But I would suggest that because there's such a diversity of crops uh, attacked by fall armyworm, if people want to get on the web and do an appropriate search, uh, I'm sure there's information on the type of damage caused by fall armyworm to things like pecans uh, on some of the uh, North American websites. Uh, there's certainly some excellent information on uh, on fall armyworm and its potential for, for impacting cotton that Cotton Info has produced. So there's a lot of information out there because this, this pest has pretty much done the full lap of uh, the planet except for New Zealand and Japan and a few bits of the Pacific. It's pretty much gone the whole way around and there's been a a great deal of investment in time and energy in, in documenting what it does and, and providing advice to uh, various farmers in different jurisdictions where the thing is established. Okay, thank you, Mark. Um, Ainsley, we've just got a question that's coming for you. Um, some people are just wondering about how big the actual moths are. So what, is, what, what size are they, please? Um, I'd say there's there's a little bit of size variation in uh, Spodoptera moths that we have in Australia, but more or less, I'd say they're about they have a wingspan will be about as big as the last trend of your thumb. Uh, sometimes maybe a little bit larger when they're spread. But what's that? Thirty millimeters? Thirty millimeters? Um, as a uh, as an adult. Okay, thank you. So, Rach, we'll move on to you now, if that's okay. Um, a lot of there's been a bit of quite a bit of interest in this, and 
um, is there going to be a map produced of where full armyworm has been found or not found? I know it's not here yet, but um, if you could give a bit of a cap recap on that, that'd be great. Thank you. Yeah, so once it is found in New South Wales um, and provided we're receiving enough reports um, from industry as well, um, yeah, we could definitely um, look at doing a map that's easy done um, and it'll be up on our website. So, yes. Okay, no, that's fine. And Janine, just a couple for you, um, please. Okay, um, there's people out there, they're just wondering whether there are alternative control options for biological systems and organic grazing slash pastures, please. Um, yeah, we'll start with the, uh, well, like with uh, cropping systems or cropping and horticultural systems is that at the moment we, we don't know of any um, effective biological controls. And as it's so new to um, to Australia, we haven't done or had the opportunity to do any work in that space. Um, there are, um, and as Mark mentioned, some of our own natural um, insect predators may um, have an impact, in, particularly in some areas of the, uh, like some regions, and also in some crops. Um, sorry, what was the, there was the second part to that question? Oh, and grazing. Um, the same thing applies in grazing, um, although being um, being a, a foliage feeder primarily, uh, if you have a heavy infestation, then then um, um, heavy grazing by your animals that graze those pastures may well help control the actual population. Okay, thanks very much, Janine. Well, look, that actually um, concludes the Q&A session. Um, so I guess the key take-home message from today is just about the importance of ongoing constant monitoring of your crops and pastures for early detection. Um, we can't stress that enough. Um, it's also, if you really do see anything unusual, like Rachel and Ainsley have said previously, to report it to the emergency plant pest hotline or to the biosecurity email. Um, that concludes the formal presentations for today. So look, thank you very much for your attendance and your time this afternoon.